Hello and welcome to issue two of my weekly comic book video. Since last week we had all Marvel, we'll make up for that and do all DC this week. We've got three titles to go over, but before we get started, something that is related to all three of them, kind of a back history of the new 52 from DC. Basically, back in 2010 or so, the main DC books or in DC writers and stuff like that got together and they basically came to the conclusion that we're stuck with the characters. Uh, Superman pretty much just got done with the uh, somewhat decent new Krypton series and he was sort of uh, out of place continuing after that big huge story they didn't really know where to go with the character so they tried a few things and really it didn't quite work out it wasn't really overly popular Batman uh, Bruce Wayne did come back from the quote-unquote dead or just being lost in time uh, Dick Grayson was still Batman uh, along with the new Robin and so they were trying to find a good place to put Bruce Wayne without it without him just taking over the lead as Batman um, they tried a few things it didn't quite work out and ultimately they decided to make him Batman Prime as it were and decided to go with a new approach to the character called Batman Incorporated. Now this didn't exactly work out too well. It was a pretty bad premise overall and it didn't exactly live up to all the major hype. As far as the third major character you would think in DC, Wonder Woman, well she never quite recovered from the mess of Infinity Crisis or Infinite Crisis back in 2006. The only real characters that uh, were actually doing marginally well in the DC world was with the Green Lantern books. But since the main three weren't doing so well, they had to do something to get sales back up or to drive more revenue. So instead of telling actual stories and whatnot, they chose to go with the typical comic uh, route and basically reboot the entire, well, basically the entire uh, DC lineup, with which all basically started in the story Flashpoint. Um, in 2011, which is kind of a continuation of Flashpoint from 2000, from the year 2000. Basically, what this whole story was was the Flash made some big, huge mistake, reverse time, change time, blah blah blah. Basically, at the end of the day, we get the rebooted DC universe. And I say rebooted loosely because basically, what it is is DC taking away decades worth of bad material but keeping everything that was quote unquote good so the good storylines are still there and still in canon but the things that are bad like 52 or Amazon's attack or whatever have been wiped from the storyline from the continuity completely and initially 52 was a big hit um, as you would expect you know books of number one are always generally always do sell well uh, however really from a, from a from a grand scheme of things all that they basically did was they took good story writers and artists and stuff like that and put them on quote unquote b-listed characters or books that didn't sell so well basically increasing their sales and basically keeping what's always going to be popular, popular and stagnant, sort of. So there were a bunch of books out there that were really, really good. Um, a lot continued on from the stories um, that, that was there before the reboot. Some kind of started fresh. And some were kind of average. 
not really all that important. And then there was those that were, should we say, very disturbing. Well, out of those uh, books that actually turn out to be rather well, we get the three books that we're going to be looking at today. The first book we're going to look at this week is Batgirl number 10. Now, previously to the reboot, Batgirl was Stephanie Brown, uh, kind of a former, um, should I say, gap plug-in for the Bat characters. <laughs> uh, she never really had a place. Um, she was more related to Tim Drake, Robin, and stuff like that, but really... Uh, she mostly was only used in the DC Universe to plug up a hole, um, like being Robin temporarily or, um, you know, or, or whatever. Um, personally, I know there's quite a few people out there that did like her as Batgirl. She never really fit the role for me as far as, as, far as Batgirl. She was generally, she generally really untrained, um, kind of a ditzy valley girl. I mean, she was intelligent, but she, you know... You, she still has that Valley Girl type of type of um, vibe to her and all that. She just wasn't all that entertaining. And this was going off of the heels of Cassandra Kane, which actually proved to be a somewhat interesting bad girl. Um, but I can see why she had to kind of go away from being bad girl because of uh, the new Robin. But anyway, so after the reboot... Basically, uh, Barbara Gordon steps back into the role as Batgirl. Now, at this time, we don't really know a whole lot about her rebooted history. We know she, she was still crippled by the Joker, um, and we know that potentially she was Oracle for a time. Um, it really hasn't been confirmed or not um, if Oracle actually existed in this world, in this new world. Uh, but basically, she was shot, she got um, special treatment, surgery, recovered, whatever, and she got the use of her legs back. Now, I know there are a lot of complaints about you're taking away a um, handicapped hero and all that stuff. And there, that's, it is legitimate quarrels about that. Um, but at the end of the day, though, the book is actually a pretty entertaining book. Um, the writer, Gail Simone, is actually well known for um, really doing well when it comes to the main female leads of a book uh, and really her stories up to present have actually been quite entertaining a little bit different it doesn't feel like um, another Nightwing or whatever where it's basically Batman but someone else um, you know, she's come to her own in the comic. She handles things differently. Um, she's gotten a lot of uh, issues in the past that she's dealing with, such as the, the whole um, being handicapped and all that stuff. And she's actually going back and telling some of the backstory that either was long forgotten or is kind of new um, since the reboot. Um, such as her mother coming back and, and so forth. So, really, it's been a pretty good book to collect. Now, number 10 kicks off a new storyline for the character. Um, we just got off of the Night of the Owl, quote-unquote, nonsense. And now we get an introduction to her next story. Story arc, should we say. And it looks to be kind of interesting. It's... it's Starting off to be questioning her motives uh, of, be, of being a superhero and what she's ultimately going to do or be and, and stuff like that. So uh, it's definitely a pickup read. Um, if if you like um, if you like the Batman character before or Batgirl character before, um, if you like kind of the uh, should we say if you liked the DC animated Batgirl a little bit, then you're gonna probably like this one a bit. Um, the story is great. The artwork, really don't have too much of a problem with. Um, it's overall, it's a decent book to pick up and read. Second book that we're going to look at this week is Batman and Robin number 10. 
Now, I believe that the Batman and Robin book is probably the one that got hurt the most, at least in the Bat world. Uh, basically, Bruce Wayne came back as being the main, main and only Batman. We got no real story about um, why Dick Grayson stepped down, or even if he was Batman in this universe. It really wasn't overly confirmed. And basically, it brings things back to the way that they always were. And that's for Batman. And yeah, I get it. You want to hear more stories about Bruce Wayne, Batman. But really, there are thousands of books out there with Bruce Wayne. Tens of thousands of books out there with as Bruce Wayne as Batman. And really, it just is tried and true and old and stuff. Now, I know that probably the Dick Grayson books weren't really selling as well as the Bruce Wayne, and that probably could have slanted things, but really, the Dick Grayson books had some horrible stories. Um, I think, you know, like, the biggest thing was the inter introduction of a villain with a hole in her head, and it just really wasn't good stories, and you can't really blame the characters and everything for being bad when the stories around them are bad. Anyways... After the reboot, Bruce Wayne came back in as Batman, and he still has Damian Wayne as his son. Uh, we don't really know the story about how Damian Wayne became his son. I know prior to the reboot, basically Bruce was tempted by um, Talia, um, or drugged by Talia, and that's kind of how that all works. Uh, we still know Damian was part of the League of Assassins and all that, but we don't really know how... Um, the conceivance <laughs> worked um, for, for Damien in this new world. Uh, you know, so far, the stories have been exactly what you would expect it to be. Uh, you know, the the um, interaction between Bruce and Damien and the, uh, the issues involving Damien's past and his uh, desire to be a bit more, should we say... Uh, say more deadly and more ab abusive than, than than Bruce would want and then you have the whole father and son thing which is kind of new this is the first Robin which is technically Bruce's son um, so it's you do have that banter the stories though are just either are just haven't been all that entertaining uh, it's been a slow build up and a, and a generally a fast conclusion or you know or stuff that we haven't heard heard or seen before. It's kind of hard not to see Damien as kind of the way that they should have gone with um, Jason Todd back in the day. You, you kind of can see some similarities between the two characters, but whatever. Um, issue number 10 kicks off a new storyline. Um, basically, you've got... Uh, Damien trying to prove his value or placement among the, all the different Robins. Um, and the first issue basically kicks off with his um, issues with Tim Drake, which Tim Drake's another character that got totally botched because of the reboot, but that's for another, another, another week. Uh, I wouldn't say that the book overall has been something worth a purchase um you know maybe a trade or something would be would be um worthwhile or a digital read or, or whatever um overall it's been quite lackluster in both the story and in the artwork um issue 10 doesn't really seem to be anything new as far as changing how that all works yeah you get some dynamics between the between the different characters however um it's kind of difficult to really get invested in these characters when we don't know what's been changed about them from the pre-reboot stories. Um, you know, like there's at the end of the at the end of the the issues before the reboot, we had Damien actually kind of warming up to Dick Grayson and kind of respecting him and how he did things and whatnot. Um, we had the Red Robin being the cold, calculating. Um, kind of kind of um almost almost like bruce wayne type of a robin um and we had we've already had much confrontation between the two prior to all of this so basically we've got 
four characters um, with Jason Todd making up the making up the fourth um, in this character and none of these characters none of these characters we really know the backstory of anymore or what's happened in the past or anything else like that so basically it's four characters that we barely know trying to prove their worth and that's where it's just not that exciting of a book um, we have no investment and really ultimately we know it's not going to end in anything major so there we go for batman and robin green lantern number the last book this week that we're going to be taking a look at now, Green Lantern has been almost the complete exception to the whole reboot 52 nonsense. Uh, basically, the stories are continuing just as they were prior to the reboot, with really, it seems, no real change. Um, the, the, the Green Lantern, should I say, grouping has split up into three different books, the New Guardians and the Corpse, and we'll get to those um, when they come out. Uh, later on but um really it, it the 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 new volume if you will picks up right where the other left off um and the other left off with actually a very very good cross series book called the war of the rings now the green lanterns have been really changing things up with the whole color schema and and and, and new blood and new stories and stuff like that. So it's been it's been entertaining for years now. Um, but really, the War of the Rings kind of ended with um, the only way that that um, the Green Lantern Corps was able to be saved and whatnot was by having the Earth Lanterns, the the Hal Jordan, Kyle Rayner, um, Guy Gardner, and John Stewart basically wearing different colors of of the rings uh, or whatnot and it ended up in the killing of a rogue renegade guardian by Hal Jordan and Hal Jordan's ring was confiscated by the guardians because of it and that's how the, the, the last story ended we started off this new volume with Sinestro is, is a green lantern again and we know that the guardians are up to something something big that no one else is really going to like. <laughs> um, so we, we know kind of what's going on there. Uh, because Sinestro um, unadmittingly respects Jordan and kind of needs him to, to pursue his agenda, uh, Jordan is forced into working with Sinestro. Basically, Sinestro gave Jordan a quote-unquote fake ring from his own ring <laughs> and I know it kind of doesn't make sense and yes there are plot holes because of that but uh, so basically we've got um, Jordan who's not a he doesn't have a full ring or whatever and they're going and doing stuff um, according to what Sinestro wants basically uh, demolishing the, the yellow green lantern or the yellow the yellow ring core and all that stuff um, issue 10 basically concludes, or about to conclude, um, the story arc that involves the Indigo tribe. Um, it's been some, it's, it's had some pretty interesting twists during the story. Um, if you like the whole cosmic thing, um, the whole cosmic type of storylines and, and uh, you know, stuff like that, then this is, obviously the whole book is definitely a buy. Um, but this particular story has actually been pretty well. It, it dives in more into what the Indigo tribe is and, and what they do and why they are what they are. Um, along, along the way, way, kind of explaining what's going to be happening in the Green Lantern books. So, uh, you know, this one is definitely one that you're going to want to start picking up if you like the cosmic stuff or if you like the Green Lanterns or, or whatever. Um, there's a lot of things shaking up, and really, it's probably the only book I would say um, for at least probably the last five to ten years. Um, it's probably been the only book in both DC and Marvel that's really been shaking things up with what we've known about the character and, and the world and, and stuff like that. So um, it's been a continually good 
good story. Jeff Johns, um, which has been the, the the driving force in the book, is still on there. Um, so definitely one that um, I would highly recommend to pick up and read. And that'll do it for issue two for uh, the weekly comic video. As always, um, please leave your comments or questions below, or if you've got questions about another book. I know there were a lot of stuff that came out this week. Uh, most of it really wasn't all that new um, as far as story goes, and I'll eventually get to some of those series later on. I'm trying to keep this kind of short. But, so, until next week, thanks for watching, and God bless.